uh, with our next roaster. There's an old saying that says, nice people can't be funny. Well, tonight, Diane Horton will prove that to be true. <laughs> <laughs> video for this event? Oh. I'm sorry, I don't know why you're here. I don't think anyone who watched it actually came. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, I know, that's why there's so few people here. Believe it or not, Eric had these people on a list to roast him, which shows how unfunny Eric is. And honestly, these weren't even his best choices. Actually, there's one person in the audience who was on his A-team, and he's not speaking tonight, Tony Rico, but thank you for joining us. So this is his B team, so I apologize ahead of time. And I actually wasn't even on his list. I just shoved my way onto the dais like I assert myself into everything here at Toastmasters. You know who else likes to shove their paws in everything at Toastmasters? Our very own mini Kristoff. Jessica Vasquez is in the house. You know I was coming for you first, boo. Jessica is a Taurus born on Cinco de Mayo who has a Frida Kahlo costume on lock. She's about as crazy and Mexican as you can get. <laughs> Jessica used to stress to me about bringing guys to Toastmasters that she was dating because everyone, everyone used to pick on her. But I guess she fixed that problem now by just dating somebody in Toastmasters. And I guess Joni's gonna be my replacement for asking me if she should bring her dates on, uh, to Toastmaster instead. When Jessica gets wasted, she starfishes in random places. I don't know if you know what that is, but it kind of looks like this. <laughs> it's not a great position, especially if you're in a dress. So I've had to be that, tw uh, that twat block on several occasions. <laughs> Speaking of twats, Cerrillo is here tonight. <laughs> I've been seeing Cerrillo's name a little too often lately. On my social media, in my text, in my email, on his shirt. Now there's real estate signs in my neighborhood with guess whose name? Surreal fucking Sparks. Are you even allowed to sell real estate in this country? I have a hard time understanding Surreal, not because he's French, but because of all the bullshit that pours out of his mouth. I'd also like to warn you now, Surreal recently decided that it was a good idea to tackle the manual humorous speak humorously speaking. Maybe to prove that the French can actually be funnier than Christophe is in our club. <laughs> but if his roast is anything like his speeches, it'll mostly be poop jokes and Surreal saying shit as many times as he can in five to seven minutes. In his defense, I think we all need to stop pointing out how many times Surreal likes to count during his speeches. Can we let him have that? He's just proud that he can get to three. <laughs> And you can count on one hand how old my next victim is. Or wait, maybe that's just how old he acts. What's up, man? I got that joke. Thank you. I like it when people tell me that they got the joke and not just laugh at it. It's great. You know what I've seen enough of this summer? Shirtless pictures of Matt Mounier. Like, we get it, Matt. You're fit. Matt likes to call himself the mortgage millennial. And I guess that's fitting because everyone fucking hates millennials. <laughs> it's generally how we Matt. Matt's got a super hot girlfriend, a great apartment, super successful at a young age. Fuck, I hate that guy. <laughs> There's only one more person here I might hate more. And somebody thought it was a great idea to make him president. That would be Shaddy. Actually, more like Shady. Does anyone actually know what he does for a living before Matt said anything? I don't think anyone had a clue. I feel like he's like Chandler from Friends where they're guessing and they're like, what does he do for a living? And they're like, trans, trans, he's a transponder. <laughs> but I actually do have a hunch on what Shadi does for a living and Matt kind of touched on it a little bit because it's a majority of what he gives his speeches on, drugs and music festivals. I don't care that he says he works at Wells Fargo. He does say that he works from home. Working from home, that's code for making meth in my basement. <laughs> if you're at Coachella and you run out of Molly right before the Tiesto show goes on stage, 
You look for the sketchiest motherfucker right by the porta potties. And trust me, you look up and see Shoddy looking like Joaquin Phoenix in I'm Still Here, staring you down with a gram in his hand. I mean, Shoddy should really be the star of the Middle Eastern remake of Breaking Bad. Let's be real. Speaking of the Middle East, I have a joke for you all. Do you know why Jesus could never have been born in New Jersey? Why? Why? Because they couldn't find three wise men and a virgin. And you can thank, and you can thank Dave Torello for that last part. all of my daddy issues to me. <laughs> Come on, ladies, I know I'm not the only one. But no, really, Dave's a great guy. He loves tortoises, he speaks Italian, he adores his kids, and he helps the Boy Scouts. I can say all of that and not worry about boosting Dave's ego because I know he can't hear me right now. <laughs> By the way, Antonio. You know, once you leave the military, you don't have to dress like it anymore. <laughs> I just feel like mismatched socks would give Antonio like a conniption or something. And he must have neck muscles of steel, this guy. He always has a camera around his neck. He's missing it tonight. Guaranteed laughs tonight, though, because at least one of Eric's top picks is here. Chris Hamill. Chris obviously just won the Helen Blanchard Award. Congratulations. Too bad you don't get to keep the plaque, though. I do. And Mark, thanks for replacing the plaque that uh, was made by a blind man. Apparently, I don't have to do my due diligence and stay with Toastmasters until 3018. Thank you for that. You only get that if you saw the plaque. Uh, Chris has a lovely girlfriend now named Catherine. I think it's great, but that means he's happy now, so I apologize in advance if he bombs tonight. <laughs> Anyways, for those of you who did see that Facebook Live video with uh, Bob for this event, uh, I am really sorry. Like, don't you do that for a living, Bob? What the hell? <laughs> I used to get notifications of when Bob went live, but I think even Facebook got fed up with it and stopped telling people about it. <laughs> watching Bob and Eric on that video was like watching those old guys on the Muppets, but <laughs> But, uh, by the way, weird thing I found about Bob when he was stalking my Facebook profile for material. If anyone is interested after this in watching Bob bathe in milk, he's down to Venmo you. Uh, I'm sure he's better than that view I got from Christoph's last speech, though. I never knew that so much material could go up one man's ass. I bet anyone in this room ten shots that Bob and Eric are already ten shots in tonight. I mean, who brings vodka to a Toastmasters sister? Uh, I'm not naming any names, but... Mark, you don't officially represent the district tonight, do you? You know another thing? Uh, no one's actually been to Eric's house that I know of. How many people here have been to Eric's house? Okay, his family. But I guess you guys are hiding a secret. At least not any member that I've talked to. And I think that's a little bit concerning. Not sure what's going on there, but I have a little hunch. If you're ever wondering what happens to people who leave the club, look no further than Eric's basement. Including Damaris right now, his latest conquest. And she's drinking her sorrows away. I saw that bottle, Damaris. She's not even on the screen right now. Then again, I don't think Eric would have that much time torturing anything. I don't know if you understand how much Eric is invested in this club. No one actually gets an award until Eric emails me about it. He's obviously more dependable than Toastmasters International, but that's not saying much. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Mark is right there. I know, I'm sorry. I had a lot of district and Toastmasters International jokes. I didn't know you'd be here tonight. But... <laughs> People think I chose Eric as a mentor for his impromptu speaking because he's funny, etc., etc., etc. But I actually chose him because I've never seen anyone so enthusiastic talking about fake dog balls. <laughs> I think we were all glad to see Eric at his DTM, so we just didn't have to hear or see him up front anymore. No, but honestly, Eric, 
I could say so much more shit about you, but I'd rather talk about the good things because you have been a great mentor to me. You've been there for me through my whole entire cancer experience, and I really appreciate you. You deserve this award. More than anyone else in our club, you are just somebody that I really look to, uh, an inspiration for everything I do here and wanting to make this club better as well. You helped build this club, and we all appreciate you. Thank you.